Hello and welcome back to Pete and Jeremy's D and D time. I, I'm Jeremy, and we're gonna have some fun adventures today. So tonight we're gonna start with our first adventure, like we always do. We're not gonna start with the third adventure or the second adventure, but the first. Adventure. And this adventure I have entitled "Rock a Bye Bye Baby." Um, and but before we dive into that, uh, some of you might be a little bit familiar with this one. Uh, we're going to quickly talk with each of our characters uh, and get an idea of who they are and what they do here in the lands of D&D time. So first and foremost, uh, we have one of our most storied heroes. They've been here forever. I mean, I've seen them on so many adventures. Triumphant, the Black Dragonborn. How are you doing, Triumphant? Care dog, what's up, bro? Yeah, Triumphant, um, how's, uh, how's the Academy of Play been treating you? It's been great, you know? Well, kind of. I got finals next week. I'm, like, yeah. really nervous about that. I don't know. I really should have studied more. I, 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 I haven't been studying. I, I hope you don't like mind me bringing some. No, like I hope you don't mind me bringing some textbooks on the adventure. No, kind of, of course. need the material. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, my oh god, my uh, first. I, I really don't want to. Don't tell him, but I don't want to fail out and become a paladin like like Victorious did. I mean, he's my bro, but if if my parents mm. knew I didn't become a cleric, well... He's not, he's not failed out. He's just, you know, it's just taking him a couple more years, you know? Mm-hmm, sure. But yeah. I, I just don't want two, dragon, two black dragonborn pissed at me. You don't want to yeah. see what happens when the acid starts flying. Well, I'm glad to hear that they're both dragonborn. I know sometimes you get this weird thing with, like, a black dragon and, like, a person, and that's even worse. Well, well, yeah, because then they're attacking you from two different fronts, and yeah, exactly. you're not good for either. Oh, God. But, you know, so I'm a little nervous for that. Otherwise, how are you doing, dog? You know, I'm doing okay. I can't really complain too much. Um, yeah, it's an all right day. You know, you... I'm you excited. I think it's going to become a good day. You and Luck or Pete should come to, like, the after parties after the quarter ends. Uh, you know, maybe maybe we'll we'll see about that triumphant. We'll see if uh, maybe we can hang out down at the Academy of Light and attend one of those those crazy, crazy uh, clerics. Yeah, okay, I'll see you there, Jer Dog. Yeah, <laughs> Ch ciao, bro. Um, our next hero this evening uh, is the one, the only Penna Bundorf. Penna, did I pronounce your your um, clan name correct? It's a clan name, correct? Bundorf. Yes. Wait, I pronounced it with like a D. Is that correct or is it Bunwolf? Bunwolf. Bunwolf. I'm so sorry. Well, Penne, how are you doing? I mean, you are now a fabled tier adventure. You've been out on a couple fabled missions. You are the brave big cap of any of like the small caps. I guess, is that what you call them? Have any of the other mushroom people that you are been like looking up to you as a you know, like an idol or something, or, or um, uh, something like that? Mm, some. I mean, the puff, the puffball heads are really creepy. They're really creepy? Mm-hmm, puffball oh. heads. They, you, they get mad if you call them bad things, and uh -huh. spores explode from their ears. Oh. That's weird, because that's how you reproduce, too, right? Oh boy, I don't want to think about the the context. I mean, it's different in fungus society, I imagine, because there are so many genders of funguses and all that thing. So I guess maybe it's not as weird in in um, the cap. Anyway, uh, Penny, what have you been doing since we last saw you? You eating anything I, good lately? I think dead meat. Yeah. So how do you hunt a dead meat? Mm, fine, walking dead meat. Oh, oh, okay. The Walking Dead. Okay, you're hunting. You're hunting undead. Still dead meat. Dead meat, good. It's true. Oh man, I didn't even think about that. You must be like their natural predator, if they're considered natural creatures. Mmm, that's in swamp. So gotta eat somehow. You know, fair enough. Well, Pennant, I'm glad to have you back. Uh, hopefully you'll find something good to eat on this adventure, but I don't know. We'll have to find out uh, what's uh, to your liking today. Dead meats. <laughs> well, we will see if there are dead meats. 
uh, <laughs> our next hero this evening, another Florin. Um, this one, less of the fungal variety, more of the flowy, happy, colorful variety. Zuzit, how are you? We have been absolutely bathed in the sun. It has been a glorious mm. summer. So you're you're in the land you're in the part of D and D time that's really experiencing summer right now. Correct. How um how does that like change your day to day? Right? Are you like more active in the summer, or are you less active in the summer because you're just bathing in the light most of the time? More active as there's more light. Mm -hmm. uh, it has allows it allows us to grow and to uh, well also still takes some time on summer evenings to sit down with our friend Tissix and discuss things. Anything interesting of, uh, of discussion lately? Oh, well, I believe here soon uh, Tissix will want to step up and try her new, her new confidence. And I wish to encourage that as well. I believe that just as I, as this one, uh, Zuzip has found love. I believe that uh, Tissix should find a, a connection back to the world as she feels alienated from it after coming back. Well, you know, you know, I was about to say, Zuzip, it's a little different for us m m uh, mammals because we only live once and then, but I guess it's not really true because Tissix did come back. Yes, so. it's been an interesting connection mm -hmm. between us something that we haven't gotten to speak too much about. Uh, th that said, though, summer's a time for memories, and we remember a great many others of ourselves and the others outside of ourselves that we've met along the way. So I know, Zuzip, this is kind of a total radical shift in the conversation, and I apologize. I'm wondering, have you, how do you feel about the cold? This has nothing to do with the adventure. I'm just wondering, how do you feel about, like, the cold? Is it okay if it's cold but sunny? It isn't that bad, especially as we've been granted the gift of fire by our lover. So I know there are some places, if you go far enough north in the lands of D&D &D time, where you have, like, six months of straight. It's just very cold up there. Have you ever considered taking, like, a, a, a sabbatical, going up there and, you know, experiencing that and seeing how, how that can change you? Oh, uh, we suppose there's a time and a place for that. For now, though, my friend, it is time to dig the roots into the soil, open our face to the sun, and drink mm -hmm. deeply of the rain. Absolutely. Well, Zuzip, I, there's going to be a lot of sun in this adventure, so I'm glad you're here. And uh, last but certainly not least, a character that maybe doesn't enjoy the sun quite as much as Zuzip. Uh, Jenny, how are you? I'm all right. Doing good. Yeah? I heard you were sick. Yeah, I wasn't feeling super great. Um, but, Jenny, it feels like just being around you, it's like an aura of vitality. I feel better, you know? Uh... Yeah, because I'm being pouted in, like, and, yeah, feel good auras. Yeah, I mean, that's just, I, I, you can't help it. It's just um, a matter of, I'm, I'm nearby and I feel great. So, Jenny, how have you been? What have you been, uh, what have you been up to lately? Well, since last time when I was with Zuzip and the rest at mm -hmm. the beach, uh, just been continuing to do volunteer work for the uh for the academy of light still won't accept me for some reason don't know that's really bizarre you should talk to triumphant i heard the, they got him pretty quick uh yeah sure <laughs> well and i was wondering so jenny i noticed that i haven't seen your squire lately i've been hearing rumors that your squire decided to leave is that true? Uh, yes, they decided to leave uh, vacation. Mm. They just they, well, they weren't really cut out for the adventuring life. Uh, funny you should bring up cutting out. Well, Jenny, I'm glad uh -huh. you're here. I'm sure it's gonna be great. Uh, we kind of are, we're out of time to talk about backstory stuff, so we'll have to come back to this at some point in the future. Um, okay. But for now, let's dive right into tonight's adventure. 
Yeah, or we could talk about something else next time. I mean, we, we could. Well, anyway, as our adventure begins, <clears throat> you four heroes have been uh, hired by Bartholomew. You are some of the um, relatively powerful characters that are around, and someone has offered him a lot of money for a split-second job, which is off the cuff, just came up. Apparently, a famous baby genius by the name of Mac Maximilian McGillick has disappeared in the night while on vacation to a small city-state in the west, southwest of the lands of D&D time. Uh, it is the, na- the name of the city-state is Montague and is nestled within the small kingdom. And, well, someone has to figure out what happened to Maximilian McGillicuddy. So, you've gotten together and you've traveled to South you were able to be teleported most of the way there by Bartholomew, as, uh, as is like. Um, there are teleportation sigils set up around the lands. Um, however, and pro- upon actually reaching the city-state of Montag, um, well, you weren't able to go right. You were teleported to the countryside nearby, and the four of you walk a country road. On your left, a small wooden fence, some strange animals grazing in the distance. Um, some of you may recognize them as cows, other people maybe are just confused by the strange horned beasts, but they seem harmless enough. The grass is green, the uh, sky is beautiful, clear and blue, and yeah, what do you uh, what do you all do? You just head right into town, or yes, it's right. imperative to seek clues about the location of this missing baby genius. You know where there's a lot of people. <laughs> Bars! Let's go drink! No. Are you supposed to drink? Or I've seen many people pouring out uh, cold ones. Maybe if you drank more, you'd be able to get into the academy. Penna, are you just kind of slowly walking along? Just yeah. ignoring the country? Kind of just wop, 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 wop. Excellent. Yeah, and he's just like just walking by them mid towards the town. Yeah. Well, after uh, a short, uh, you find yourselves approaching the outskirts of this small city. Um, it has some large cobbled walls um, with a, a few towers every so often. There's a large city gate, which is currently wide open. Bright flags and other banners uh, sporting red and yellow colors and uh, the sigil of the city, which is just a mountain shape, a mountain silhouette. Um, Yeah, it could fly from the rooftops of buildings. The street is bustling with people. It is a busy, busy day in Montague. Wasn't there a necromancer living on the outskirts of this town? Are you asking me? Uh, Well, yes, but also the party. (laughs) I wouldn't know. That's kind of dark for me. It is necromancer. Is it good to eat? I'm sure it would have tasty treats for you, my friend. Yeah, they're like about the dead and stuff. They're like, they're like a luncheon for you. Mm, yeah, when you see Penny drooling at the map. <laughs> this small, squat mushroom person with this very large, you have a big, large red uh, cap to the mushroom, right? And it's, it's, just, it's just a puddle of blah, of drool. It's more of a like a kind of a yellow orange with some like yellow flowery spots. But... Mm-hmm. Excellent. <clears throat> but yeah, you see, there are uh, citizens walking all around to and fro, doing their their various day to day activities. Um, uh, you can, however, see something that is a little out of the ordinary. As you kind of enter Montague's city square, people are hawking wares and selling their various goods at stands and carts. Um, there are, you know, guards um, in chainmail with, you know, spears, all, of course, brightly colored. But you can see in the distance, um, looks like maybe on the northeast quadrant of the city, there's a, uh, a light smoke that's kind of floating off into the sky. Um, it's otherwise cloudless sky, which is why it kind of stands out so much. Um, and it looks like, yeah, a recently maybe large fire or something. But 
nothing else of particular interest right now. There is also a tavern nearby called the Leaky Bucket. I'm going to go get some Prusky's, guys. I begin heading towards the smoke. Okay. So Jenny, Jenny, is, like, follow us. Which one? Are you following Triumphant uh, or Jenny? Uh, Jenny, Jenny. Okay. And Zuzip, would you like to do anything? Yes, if they're going to be going um, and doing a little carousing inside the leaky bucket, mm -hmm. um, I would like to, to ask around if there's guards that might know of uh, uh, maybe any ne'er-do-wells or people who uh, who aren't known quantities inside the city. Yeah, okay. So you go to talk to some of the guards. Um, and the kind of first guards you approach, again, chain mail with bright yellow colorations and kind of red accent. Uh, they hold spears, which at the end have these little banners with that sigil of the, the mountain on them. And uh, as you walk over, um, I imagine is is Zuzip like very lithe and viney as a plant folk, or are you more solid with vines and things coming off of it? Not necessarily vine. Uh, more more lanky and viney, a, a little a little kind of wavery when she walked. Excellent. So Zuzip, as you approach this guard, they turn to you. Oh, hello. Greetings. Um, you are a strange creature to be seen here on Montag. Yes, we are. Well. We're here on behalf of Bartholomew, uh, and uh, we're searching for a baby that has gone missing. Ah, yes, we have heard of this. Uh, they uh, were down in the North Quarter just the other day before the fire broke out. Oh, that's useful information, and we'll go there uh, soon. Though, uh, are there any suspects that you already have? Well, we have brought one man into custody, but... It is not entirely clear if they uh, had anything to do with it. There has been large creatures sighted on the horizon, shadows flying through the sky. Uh, we are not entirely certain what they could be, though. Oh, that sounds disastrous. If uh, you'd like to know more, the, the guards at the North Gate, they uh, go out into the countryside. More frequently, I am assigned here to the city center. They may be able to tell you more. Thank you for your time and your courtesy. Here, have a flower that will complement your bright colors. We appreciate them greatly. The guard smiles and takes her. Well, thank you very much. And kind of gives you a, a polite nod. Kind of fastens it in between some of the chain links of their, their chain mail and goes about their business. They seem to, the guards, there are a handful of them here in the city center. They seem pretty relaxed. Like they're not, they don't care too much about whatever. They go over and start, you know, talking to one of the, the merchants, and buying some bread or something. Um, w uh, I'm going to proceed there and ask general questions about what's known. Uh, if you want to keep sure. things brief, what, we can go over a list of information together. We can yeah, role play, but I, I want to be courteous of, of time. Yeah, I'm just going to keep the flow going between everybody. And if you have a couple of questions, you can think them up and we can work that out when we come back in a minute. Um, triumphant. You are a large black dragon. Um, do you have a weapon? I have like a mace and like all of my textbooks. Okay, are you like wearing any sort of vestments? Well, I got this armor here. It's pretty glowy and stuff. What's the armor? It's just like this, this solid scale mail. Okay, so you wear so you're not wearing anything that would like denote religious iconography. Oh no, but you know I have this little Paylor pendant, because you know, Paylor. So I think you're you're drawing a lot of eyes as you walk through the city, a large uh, black dragonborn. I mean, you have like the big curling horns and everything. So as you open the door into the bar... Um, Triumphant is in the house! <laughs> the tavern kind of goes silent. And everyone just kind of turns to look at you. And uh, it's just quiet in there for a minute. You look around, there are a fair number of people in this tavern for the middle of the day. 20 or 30 people, maybe. Um, behind the counter, there is a large, bald ogre uh, who has what looks like a piece of like a trumpet sticking out of the side of his ear. And he looks at you. It's okay, it looks fine. 
Jeez, you're on me! And everyone goes back to their their normal thing, like, oh, all right. And oh, that was a little measured reaction, but yeah, I mean, what's up? Don't really care too much. Who are you talking to? The the ogre, the barkeeper? Yeah. Hey, you walk over and you're like, oh, hey, how you going? I'm Bucket. Bucket? That's an what? awesome name, bro. Yeah, welcome to the Rinky Bucket. Hey. What? You want some drinks? Oh, hell yeah. I, I'm going to have to check your ID. You know, I don't think you do. Let's get some drinks out here. Look at how no, big I, I am. How could I be under The proclamation says if you're under 22, you must not drink. I'm... Montag has some weird rules. Would, would someone under 23 have, like, textbooks this big? Yeah, Dragon Wars don't live that long, right? Listen, I just bought drinks for everyone. Come on, bro. Do you want to roll me a persuasion check? Uh, you promise? I mean, yeah. Okay, fine. What do you want, Yaksha? I just really have ale, so I'm gonna get you that. Sure. He, he starts to get you some, some ales. And, like, a lot of people are also coming toward the counter now, but they're keeping a distance from you. Like, they're loitering on the outskirts, waiting for you to walk away from the bar, because they're obviously still intimidated by you. But they're, like, lining up to get, or getting ready to storm the bar once you walk away from Hey guys, so I'm like here on a babysitting job. Yeah. Okay. okay. <laughs> I think we fade out at that. Uh, Jenny, <clears throat> you and Penna uh, travel throughout the streets. Uh, the buildings are fairly tall here. They reach uh, two, three, even four stories for like the peaks of uh, towers. Um, and so there's really a lot of shade in this, which is a nice relief for probably both of you. Um, and after, you know, a 10, 15 minutes of, of strolling down the roads, you begin to enter this northeast quadrant. of, And you see it's a lot less busy here. There are considerably fewer people mulling around. Um, the few people that are, I mean, there are some beggars out on, out, not like, out in the open, they're in alleys, but you, you see them now, where you hadn't really seen any um, any uh, underprivileged people like that elsewhere in the city. Um, as you continue to scroll forward, you see the quality of the buildings kind of deteriorates a little bit. Uh, and as you enter into this city square in the northeast quadrant, there is a fountain in the middle that seems in pretty poor repair. It hasn't really been... Um, it maybe at one point was a beautiful marble fountain, but it's just chipped and broken. And there's still a dribble of water, but not much more. Besides that, you can see this from the area you're coming from, the street you're coming from on the southeast corner of the area. Um, you see that there are, uh, the buildings are fine, but on the opposite side, you see that there is obvious fire damp. Um, some of the buildings that were made of wood maybe have collapsed. Uh, there are a lot more guards around here, and there are a lot more of those uh, other individuals hanging around. Those people that are maybe recently um, lost a, ha a home, for example. Um, they have, you know, blankets and things, and they don't seem super happy. There are also many guards. Would you two like to do anything? I'd like to investigate the scene to see if I can get anything else. Uh, like how the fire started, anything. Pinna will probably... Pinna will probably see like one of the beggars, or like she'll probably mm. look at one that looks like it's... They need more food. Or something, or like needs... I guess the one that's like the ones that look kind of scrawny. Mm -hmm. She'll probably go up to them and like, uh... Pull out of a little pouch that she usually keeps several herbs and spices in and just uh, give them like a large handful of nuts and berries and whatnot that she usually produces using her good craft. Yeah, so you go over to start like giving out some food and you get some attention from some people. Um, but you don't see anyone that looks really too poor off. Um, maybe to your surprise. 
it uh, seems that most of the folks around here um, are recently um, without home. Um, it, well, she still does it, but and like probably ask like she'll probably ask about some things like about some of the happenings and whatnot. Yeah, and they tell you, oh, it was terrible! Just the other night, uh, they were horrible cracking and breaking sounds and a fire rang out. It was a new moon, so there wasn't a cloud in the sky. It was terrible. It just ravaged the entire city. It's been so dry lately. And uh, they're kind of, people are telling you about all these things. They're happy to take the food from you. Um, but yeah, they're, they're asking, they're asking some things like, do you live in the city? Um, maybe is there somewhere, if you have a, a place here, could we perhaps stay with you for a night or two while we're waiting to get things repaired in our homes uh, and there things like that uh jenny what were you investigating for the uh, the cause of like a set of a fire or any other clues that i could get okay so yeah you're skulking around and look at i'm sorry looking around you're investigating and you're going out some of the buildings you're like up oh, there's definitely fire damage um but it looks like a like when a fire starts in a city like this it spreads there's no scorch marks on the ground. It's not like a dragon flew by and breathed fire on everything. Um, because you would see damage elsewhere. There were a few standing trees in the city square. Um, but uh, yeah, those are, are fine. They aren't all burnt. However, as you're like looking at some of the buildings and you're drawing these conclusions, you're, hey, what are you doing over there, skulking dark elf? And a couple of the guards start to walk over to you. We're turning to the scene of the crime, are we, arsonist? Three I'm guards, wait for them three to guards approach. approach you, yeah. Yeah. What are you doing over here? My name is Jenny, the Protector Galanodal. Protector? What are you protecting these people from? They've already lost everything. I'm investigating the scene of the crime. <laughs> oh. Yeah, a lot of protect. A lot of protecting you'll do with that. What are you doing? For real? Exactly. This place what is I off said. limits to non guards. To non guards? You heard me? That uh, seems suspicious. Why would the guards want to hide the truth from the public? Did a like, oh, guard I see. cause the yeah. fire here? Rolls his eyes. No uh, guards caused fires here. Someone must have knocked over a lamp, which is giving it a thorough search. Sorry, uh, can, roll, can I roll insight on this guy? Yeah, sure. Uh, and while, while they do that, uh, uh, does, can Penny overhear them? Uh, yeah, definitely. Penny, you see that these three guards have kind of like come right up to, uh, to Jenny, and I think both of you to that it's evident that they are trying to cause a scene uh, uh, they're trying uh, to provoke uh, jenny it looks like uh, uh, and jenny, uh, you can tell with your insight they're trying to provoke so all right so all right uh, so are any of them paying attention to me or are they just no over there with... you're short enough that they haven't really noticed you you know oh good in that case okay who disguised yeah. himself as one of the guards Okay, so you conjure this illusion, and a couple of the people are like, <gasps> like are, are kind of surprised. Some of the, like random people. There are tons of, of people that are now homeless that are in this area. See you, but none of them really do anything about it. So yeah, like, I'll probably make myself look like uh, at least not exactly mm -hmm. like one of them, but like as a guard. Uh huh. So yeah, I'll probably go up to them and like. Uh, hopefully, I mean, uh, hopefully I'm in range of Penny to, uh, Penny, I mean, sorry, Ginny to see me, so. Okay. Yeah, I think, like, you're, you start to approach, and Jenny, can you owe me a perception check? Or actually, what's your passive perception? My passive perception is 11. Yeah, all right. Hmm, I'm not sure you saw, <laughs> I'm not sure you noticed them transform uh, with this disguised self illusion, but the guards are kind of bearing down on you a little. Um, do you want to do, do anything? Do you want to talk to them at all? Or uh, 
So I'm gonna like take the dodge action, which is just okay. like me kind of like standing there, like getting ready if one of them like kind of jumps at me. But okay. I'm gonna continue like talking and being like, no, this is kind of like the thing that adventurers do. Bartholomew's adventurers come to places that they've been called to. We investigate the scene. We do this kind of stuff. All the and of course the guard's like, oh yeah, I'm sure you're an adventurer with Bartholomew. Yeah, of course. And uh, Benny, this, uh, Penna, this is when you're kind of walking up behind. You, uh, well, Jenny, you see a force. Well, 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 one second. Uh, I was, uh, before I actually start approaching them, I, I want to ask like any of the beggars I was helping, if they know the Name of the cap, the guard captain. Uh, roll me a persuasion check. Oh crap, that's one of my bad ones. Yeah, you just transformed into an illusion of a guard, and then, and then asked the mate who the guard captain is. So none of them, they keep away from you. They're like, oh no, you're gonna, this is bad. You're bad news. They're staying away so, from you. Uh, so not even my folk hero background want to help me. I don't think that your folk hero background helps you while you're disguised. Yeah, exactly. I think if you had tried to find this information first, maybe, but you've you've startled them at this point. I think. Ah, uh, dang it. Would you still uh, like a... Yeah, I also do the disguise self. I, I mean, I can't really take it back uh, in this case, but yeah. Okay. So yeah. You approach the three guards. All right, yeah, approach the three guards. So yeah, uh, I probably like tap one on the shoulder and uh, like do my best male guard <laughs> impression to ask what's going on there. Okay, he turns to you. You're a little small. You're um, a little fat. <laughs> he looks at you just flabbergasted. I Excuse me. Wow. What no, are you he here? Is right. What are you a relief? I rolls his eyes. All right, boys, let's get out of here. This dark house. Don't go skulking. And they. Jenny continues to skulk. Yeah, Jenny continues to skulk. They walk off, and if they have fun with this. Don't let um, they kind of turn to you, Penna. Just don't let the people get too handsy. They're very a little desperate. I just not. They uh they they leave. After they like after they leave out of sight, Penna just reverts back to pit, uh, being. Yeah, <laughs> they walk down the street and blow up. <coughs> um, with a little bit more skulking. Uh, the two of you are able to, like, search a little bit more in this district. You can't find the source of the fire. Again, it seems just like a city fire that's gone out of, got out of control in the night. But you do find the address that you were supposed to go to to find, um, this, uh, this baby, Maximilian McGillica. And, uh, yeah, and you're, I assume you're gonna lurk around there and explore? Yeah. Can each of you roll me either investigation or perception checks as you look around? Can I I'll give them advantage? For what reason? Oh, can, just like can, help? Yeah, take the help action because um, I've been rolling hot garbage. Uh, I just rolled hot six. garbage. Um, if yeah, I I think it's just you're both rolling. All right. <laughs> You're looking around. You're not really finding too much. It's a, it's a tough one. We'll come back to you in a minute. Uh, Zuzip, you approach the northern gate. Uh, as you do so, you can see that there are two large wooden towers on either side of the northern gate, and one of them is just destroyed. It's smashed to pieces. Uh, and you can see that there are workers kind of repairing it, and there are people out and about, a uh, few guards, or many guards um, on duty including some guards with, like, crossbows up on the wall. Uh, and as you come to approach, I mean, none of them, like, up, like head you off at all by default. Oh. Uh, 
It smells like there was a, a fire in the city, but this tower has been smashed. Can yeah, you tell well, us what happened? Oh, are you talking to one of the guards? Yeah. Oh, okay. So you approach one of the gate guards. Ah, oh, yeah. Well, this happened in the night. It seemed to collapse. No one was really here at the time. Usually at night, we, you know, close up the gates, swap stuff out. You know, swap out guards, one at each gate. It's really... We don't have a lot of problems here in Montauk, for the most part. But thing collapsed, killed poor Jack. Oh, poor Jack has been killed. He was up in the post. Oh, well, here, for each of you, a memorial flower that you can wear. I mean, it's just one guard who's, like, talking to you right now. The others are, like, you know, making sure no one interferes with it. Oh, all right, well, then I'll, whatever. I'll pop a few other seeds in the blossoms and hand them, tell them to give it to his friends. Ah, thanks. Well, that's a tragedy. I, I heard that there were some fearsome beasts living on the outskirts of town or beyond in the world. Well, we see them off in the distance, usually. They're hardly silhouettes. I know some of the outlying windmills have been attacked lately, but that's really about it. Hmm. And also that there was uh, a baby, uh, a child, genius, I believe, that has gone missing. Ah, uh, McGillicuddy. Yeah, he was kind of a celebrity when he came into town. People were very excited, saying he was going to fix the problems with the, the water or something. The old fountain's not working. Quite. Oh, that's a tragedy. Yeah. He's apparently maybe dead, gone mi I mean, probably not dead and can't die, but... No one's found him since the fire down in the northeast quadrant. Oh, yes, well... The northwest quadrant. Uh, I heard that a suspect had been arrested, is this correct? Yeah, but I don't think that's really... I don't think it's related, my guess. I think, I think it's probably just a ne'er-do-well. I mean, there are lots of... Lots of belligerent people right now, lots of people without homes. Things are going to get rowdy in that part of town. Oh. Uh... If you'd like, we can bring you in. Are you one of the adventurers, I assume? Yes, we're we're here on behalf of Bartholomew. You must have read our mind. Uh, I, I was going uh, to ask we were, if it we would be possible to talk to these adventurers well. coming in. Sorry, you want to talk to him? Yeah, sure. I can bring you down to the uh, the stockade. Oh, the oh a stockade uh, uh, on public display. Well, just for a few hours. Oh, Lock them uh, up I, I believe the custom is to throw fruit or uh, refuse. Is, if is you'd this... like. I don't know oh. what these guards are, but their accents change by the minute. Uh, it's uh, a bustling little metropolis here. Yep. At Indeed. the same time, I believe a real estate friend of mine would call this place a real fixer-upper. Gives you like a... Ugh, like he shrivels up his nose like, I don't know, it's a nice city. Oh, yeah, oh, yes, my real estate friend would say it's quaint. Uh, uh, anyway, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, or, or we're sorry. Uh, getting distracted because this is such a, an, an interesting place to, for us to see. Uh, mm -hmm. Yes, if, if we could uh, be directed to the stockade, we won't take you from your post unless you're looking for an excuse. I wouldn't mind having a, uh, I wouldn't mind have a, a flashy, colorful piece of meat on my arm, and I'll smile in a kind of an awkward floor and smile. You'll be a persuasion check. Come right up. Been rolling, rolling real, real cold today. But he says, you're a strange one, but sure. It's right down the way. Hey, uh, Jim, taking my break. He yells up to one of the other guards. And, uh, says, yeah, right down here. And starts to lead you down to the, the other side of the city, or another part of the city where there's kind of more public gardens, almost. Um, more more of, like, um, parks than gardens. But, oh, beautiful. And, yeah, sure, sure enough, there is uh, a individual that is locked up in stockades in uh, one of the public squares down there. Uh, they're kind of yelling kind of drunkenly, and the guard explains to you along the way, ah, oh, yes, they were arrested this morning. Drunk is piss wandering around and burned out. Oh. So, th this person has been hung out to dry, I suppose? Something like that. Because the fire, well, they're calling him a suspect. Oh, I doubt yeah. it. I doubt it's worth the salt. All right, well, uh... Are you going to throw any fruit at him? 
Um. Well, I, I'm gonna approach the person first. Mm -hmm. uh, is is this person even coherent? Uh, yeah, they're all like, I'm flying and burning the place down. I'm. Why are you throwing fruit at me? <laughs> they're just kind of, yeah. Oh, do you have a preference? What? So you just walk right up to the Stargate? Oh, maybe I didn't drink too much. You don't look like, what's wrong with you? What's wrong with your face? Oh, oh you see, uh, we're so sad. Uh, a baby of ours has gone missing. And and I, we were really hoping that perhaps you could help us find this missing, this child. Uh, yeah, I saw his tower get attacked by a big, 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 big thing. And attacked, attacked, it was last night, they have come out, come out of the barn. And did the big, big thing have a, have a child? Flap. What? Did the big thing have a, a, a child, a, a, a genius, perhaps? I don't, I don't know, it attacked the tower. Oh, the then why then did you north and then the fire? Oh, you started the fire because of the monster. No, I didn't, I didn't start. I didn't start no fire. I saw the fire when the big thing attacked the tower. Oh, it and came out of the sky like, like big old rock, falling of the heavens, smashing into things. And grab uh, and fly away. While while he's kind of rambling on here, I'm going to turn to the guard mm -hmm. that was escorting me and ask uh, if the water was flowing. Would the fire in the city have been put out much? Uh, probably. I mean, no. that's the whole thing. You see, to get the water working again. Yeah. Uh, does Montag have uh, enemies? Oh, well, not really. There's not a lot of cities nearby. There's only Mount Montag. Interesting. Well, Got nothing. I, I appreciate your escort. If you have somewhere else to be, then uh, yeah, I, I release I'm... you from, from your service. <laughs> well, honestly, the pleasure's been mine. No service necessary. But, but eh, no, interest, this is interesting. We were going to wait until he sobered up a little bit to ask him, but some interesting news. Bur a big winged creature started the fire. Maybe a dragon? You think a bird? Uh, he said a rock, but rocks don't fly unless people throw them. By the way, Zuzip has an eight intelligence, so... <laughs> uh, hmm. Fair enough. Uh, maybe when he sobers up, he can give us a bit of a better description. Yes. Uh, I have a wonderful well, day here in the city. Good luck it, finding your baby. Yes, uh, I, I think I'm supposed to say you too. Uh, I hope you can find your baby as well. Um... All right. I mean, I'll, I'll I'll listen to the ramblings uh, if this person's yeah. gonna you know add anything. Otherwise, I have some information, and <laughs> I'm if I'm if I'm already in the north and I just got to go a little bit over to the burnt district, I'll search for the. Yeah. So I mean, the guy just kind of rambles some more, um, repeating a lot of the same stuff. Some sort of large flying thing attacked uh, McGillicuddy's tower that he was living in. Everyone knows about uh, Maximilian McGillicuddy here in the city, and. Uh, that's all. And then that started the fire. That's pretty much what you deduce from this guy. Yeah. He also doesn't like the way taxes work here in the city. But yes. that's a, a whole other tirade. <laughs> um, that's for another bar crawl. <laughs> yeah, and speaking of a bar crawl, triumphant, you're still in the Chug, bar. chug, 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 <laughs> chug. Have you done anything to further the plot, or are you just drinking with the bar, the denizen? Oh, I'm getting them drunk, so they tell me what they know. <laughs> okay. Everyone's very drunk, except for the ogre, who's drank almost as much as everyone, but seems ineffective. Just completely ineffective. And he goes, wow, you can drink a lot. Yeah, so I'm babysitting or something like that. I'm looking uh -huh. for a smart baby. Oh, that's Mr. McGillicuddy, baby. Yeah, that one. So uh, yeah. where can I find him? Anyone? Uh, anyone? I mean, you ask people and they can all confirm he he was living in a tower in the northeast, uh, northwest quadrant, but everything burned down there. 
You up in the middle of the night, Mr. Bucket, sir? Yeah, I live here in the tavern. But are you awake at night? I mean, not a lot. Only when I'm making new stuff. I mean, do do you know what happened with like all of the smoke and stuff? Yeah, maybe that was a big where fire. the baby went. No, I have no idea. I, I'm nowhere near that. Oh, well then. Back in the middle of the city. Any other happenings going around town? I'm sure you hear a lot. You know, with well, all the people talking, I'm sure probably have guards come in here. Yeah, I mean, the water's been flowing better to, like, Monster City. The water? Why yeah. wasn't it flowing? I mean, I guess we got all this booze anyway. Uh, it was an earthquake and some stuff got broken, I think. And this this ogre bucket will explain to you that that is why Maximilian McGillicuddy, baby genius, is here. To fix the flow of water again. And apparently he had been doing it and doing a pretty good job for, like, most of the town. He hasn't quite, hadn't quite gotten to that northwest quadrant when it burned down. Oh, well, sounds good then. So, uh, can I get one for the road? Yeah, and the ogre tells tells you that it was like it's aqueduct, just diverting rivers and stuff. But uh, who, what are you asking for? You asking one for the road? Yeah. All right, here I'm gonna give you the extra special bucket, and it just gives you what looks like a wooden bucket, like you'd mop with, that's just filled with ale. Have fun. Oh, thanks. Okay, oh, by the way, we're having a party at the Academy of Light next week. I'll see you there. I don't know where that is. See you there. <laughs> you leave. Uh, Jenny, as you and Penna have been investigating, yep. it looks like there's a remnants of like a laboratory that's been set up. There's some fireplaces. This is clearly like a very, um, a full alchemical workshop had been here, and it's all burned to shit. And the only thing that you find that really stands out um, that isn't just completely obliterated, it's still extremely badly burned and it smells worse than anything, which is why you find it, despite your maximum roll of eight. You find a long, um, like, spear-like object. Uh, it's got to be at least seven, well, probably six feet long. Um, and it has these, it's made of a, a strange um, hardened, like almost a bamboo-like material, but it's so badly charred, you can't really tell. And it has these little frills of char coming off on the sides of it. Um, it looks like a giant burned feather. Can a penne make a nature check? It looks like a giant burn feather. Hey, that one just... <laughs> yeah, you're Pinna not going to get much more from it. It's destroyed. Uh, Pinna would just pull up the giant burned feather and look at it. Yeah. It's very light, despite its outrageous size. It all seems pretty sturdy. Pinna will try like, flapping it up and down, see if it has any resistance. Yeah, some of the little like frills that would come off the side of the feather, uh, the like little fletchy parts, uh, kind of crumble to ash because they're so badly burned. Just some of them, or yeah, just some of them. I mean, the feather is like super badly damaged. Okay, yeah. So yeah, Penny will just take the uh, the feather and try to stick it somewhere that will uh, remain on. Sure, You're just carrying the giant feather around, the huge like yeah. banner basically sticking off you. Yeah, probably like sitting right out of the backpack. Jenny, are you doing anything? Uh, could I have nature check to see what kind of feathered? Yeah, it, it's the same situation as uh, Penne, who both wanted to do that too. The feather's so badly damaged, it's kind of like... Just yeah. not at all. Yeah. Uh, wait, uh, can we use a nature check to... You can use some check? context clues, uh, probably from a giant feathery creature. Oh, I was going to... I was gonna ask, can we use a nature check to determine if such creatures live within the area? Sure, uh, that would something. That's something you could do. Uh, alternatively, if one of you would like to like uh, an arcana check to see if it has any alchemical purposes, you could do that as well. Given there wasn't an alchemy lab, um, 
Penna, from your 20 nature check, you know that Montag and its countryside are home to many monstrous creatures. Um, and yeah, I mean, a lot of them have feathers. Um, of this size, it's got to be like a small rock or something. Rock being a uh, a giant eagle, basically. A really, really big giant eagle. Um, this feather is clearly too large for a normal giant eagle. Yeah, Penny, like, uh, will uh, probably, like, uh, after, like, picking it up, she'll probably look to uh, Jenny and go, it's a rock feather. What was that? You cut out. Huh. Penny will probably look to Jenny and say, rook feather. Hey Jenny, guys! Anything? Oh yeah, yeah. Triumphant like waves to you as he's walking over. Try I solved the you. mystery. It's a rook. Well, no. So like this little baby dude, he was fixing the water ducks, and I guess they're like diverting water from somewhere. It must have needed to go somewhere, and whoever he was diverting it from, he, he like pissed him off, and so they came and took him. I go to college for a reason, guys. I don't just party all the time. Pin it will like look to Ginny, see what she thinks. Zuzip, you're approaching the party at this point. Well, we were able to figure out some information. Apparently, a rock fell from the sky and smashed the tower. I don't know where it came from. Uh, I don't see uh, Mount Montauk isn't is too far for a rock to tumble that way. Penny will actually point to the, the giant feather sticking out of her backpack. Rook. No, feather. Rook feather. N no, that looks too soft to be a rock. No, you see what they're saying is that there's a bird called a rock. Oh. Do, don't you use rocks to hunt birds? You know, I'm guessing. Yes. It makes that sense. A rock, rock bird hunts people. A rock was downstream, probably, and then it's like taking their water, and the rock got pissed off because it needs a drink, too. Oh, yes, there's a water problem in the city. Probably why so many buildings burned. I say we just like follow where the stream goes, <laughs> or at least what's left of it. That's crazy enough to work, uh, especially as I don't have any other ideas to try, unless anyone, are any of you a bird expert? I mean, I know someone who watches a lot of birds. Like, as a voyeur? Sure, we could call him that. Oh, that's a little lewd. <laughs> I know, Roger is that way sometimes. <laughs> So, uh, the lot of you, uh, it sounds like you're making your way to the, uh, <coughs> the northern side of town where the old river used to flow. Pretty much, yeah. Okay. I mean, at least that's what my books are telling me or something. So, yeah, you, you make your way uh, north out of the city proper and toward the countryside, the bustle of, of trade and people going here and there. Uh, all kind of fades uh, pretty pretty abruptly as you as you leave the city, and the sounds of birds flying around doing their thing um, becomes well present. You hear wonderful birds. There's a little bit of wind flowing through the air, but no stream. And as you look to your right, there used to be a nice river that flowed past the city, which is now a bone dry brown riverbed. Um, there's In some places you, where maybe there was richer sediment build up, you see there's little sprouts of green grass beginning to grow. But yeah, it's just a big you, you know, uh, basically um, trench that's dug maybe 30 feet across. It was a sizable river, 15 feet deep in the middle. Hey, baby bro, you around here? I'd like to walk uh, along the river. Uh, well, like in the river bed along the path. 
as we're Jenny searching. Follows. Yeah. So as, as you're walking, uh, you're seeing the, the mud is all pretty solid at this point. Um, <clears throat> looks like maybe this has been uh, dried out for a few weeks. Um, and as you walk, you see that there are footprints down here. Other people have been down. Um, and you see spaces where some of the mud has dried, leaving the imprints of like fish that maybe have been picked up and taken away by people from the town. Um, after you walk for maybe 10 or 15 minutes, you um, no longer see really anything. There's no more fish. There's no more footprints. Um, you come across, across a few dead fish every so often, just uh, cooked and rotting from the heat and the sun, but not a lot of anything else. There are a few trees every so often. It's a fairly open um, grassland here. And uh, after half an hour walking up this riverbed, you can see that there is a large windmill. There's like a dock coming up, uh, coming out. The dock uh, that would clearly for like docking uh, stuff from the mill to bring back down to the city. Um, and this windmill seems pretty badly damaged. And of course, that dock is now like 15 feet up in the air above you, supported by some wooden um, wooden posts. Um, that yeah, it's all very dry. Probably at the top of that. I mean, think if it was rotating. I don't know. That might be necessary. Yeah, you see that the actual like rotating part of the windmill, um, the the fan part is smashed to bit, flying all there's debris strewn all among the ground. Uh, it's like someone just came through and just smashed it apart with a huge hammer. Um, and the act the ceiling of the, the tip top of the windmill is just gone. It's like the top was taken off of it. Um, you can see that the windmill is still turning, though. There's like the tiny little knob sticking out where that big fan part would attach, and that knob is spinning really quickly, right? Because there's really no anything about it. It's the little bits of, of, of fan that are still there. I mean, should we check it out? There might be witches or something inside, but... No, we don't see why not. Okay. You clamber up the side of the, uh... of the, the, the dry river, and you begin to hear a sound as you kind of get up there. Besides the creaking of the windmill structure, you hear just a distant... Wah, wah, wah. Kind of hey, baby kind of, bro! Uh, coming from up in the top areas of this windmill. And you also hear... <laughs> some horrible... Is that or does the machinery back and grease? Forth. It sounds like it's squeaking. I Jenny mean, rushes forward. There's a baby okay. somewhere. You, you rush into the windmill? Mm-hmm. Okay. You rush through the front door. The front door is still intact. Uh, you reach for it and pry it open. Um, it's, you know, a little tight. It feels like there's some big cracks in the windmill's main structure, so maybe it's, it's not perfectly supported anymore. Um, it does take a, a hard pull, but you just watch it with relative. Uh, you rush inside, and you can see the twisting uh, gears and everything within the windmill. There was a big spiral staircase uh, made of wood, which seems to have collapsed under the weight and yeah you can see way up top um there is a another level a second floor to this windmill um and that is where it seems the sounds the cries the, uh, 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 the little cry uh and you uh is coming from and you hear the sound of what sounds like a rattle okay what would you like to do I would like to rush into the room. Okay, you are in the bottom level of the windmill. You see all these gears yeah, and the millstone and uh, all so that stuff turning. So there's no turning. stairs? The stairs have collapsed. Hey, okay. can anyone fly? I will fly. Fly, class flying yourself? Yep. Okay. Um, what would everyone else do at this moment? In fact, maybe we should roll for initiative just to keep track of the order. If we're at that point where people are just rushing in because you've heard the baby. Okay. 
So, quickly get my order up. So we got Zuzip. Uh, we have Jenny. Oh, well, I'll put Jenny first, right? Uh, we have uh, Triumphant, and we have and So, uh, Jenny, you are the first to go. You cast Fly upon yourself. Your Paladin magics flow through you. Uh, do, how does this manifest? Do you get like wings? Yeah, they're the same raven black wings as last time. Oh, okay. Very paladin y. Yep. <clears throat> and you're you're flying just straight up toward the top? Yes. Okay. Um you see where the main stairway used to enter into that second floor? It is all covered with debris. However, there is a small tight opening near where like the where the um the main post of the mill, you know, would go up. The spinny part. Yeah, I'll fly my way through that little opening. Okay, uh, you'll have to squeeze for that last part, but so you basically you fly up, you grab on, and you start to pull yourself. Up. And the windmill is, yeah. I actually have this written out. Uh, it is, how high? How do we decide this windmill was? I think the windmill is 20 feet high. So you're easily able to get to the top. As you do, you... <clears throat> climb up the top and begin to pull yourself through and you can see a couple of things. There's debris everywhere. There's little twigs and sticks and uh, other bits of um, hay and things like that. There's the incredibly awful scent of like rot and you see you know, right in front of you there's the body of a cow um, and you can't really see beyond it where you are but you hear the baby coming from over that way. How much movement do you have? So you squeeze for 10 Flying, feet. I have 60. Okay, so you squeeze for 10 feet, and then you fly for 20 feet. So do you just want to pull yourself all the way up? Yes. Yeah. All right, you pull yourself all the way up, and you look past, and you can see what uh, is a, a baby uh, is is right up in front of you, and it is uh, kind of huddled in the corner, and it's, uh, it has in one hand a, uh, what do you call it, shaky... I just rattle. Said a, ago. a rattle, uh, and it is battling. It's got like a very, it's got coiffed hair, uh, and it looks like it was once dressed very well, but it looks not in great shape now. Um, it's clothing at least, and it is battling what looks like uh, a, a giant uh, featherless bird. Uh, it's not really giant so much. Um, it looks like a giant baby bird, and he's yeah. That's what's that's going on. He's bashing it with its rattle. All right. Uh, and probably takes your bonus... movement to get to it if you'd like to. A bonus action Hexblade's Curse on the giant featherless bird. Okay. You do so. Uh, did I, did I use my action this turn to cast a spell fly, or is it? Yeah. 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 Okay. Around. Yeah. That's it. Okay, so you're up at the top. Zuzit, what would you like to do? Due to the state of the windmill, uh, is the inside able to be climbed with any sort of, you know, cracks or handholds or uh, Yeah, there's stair all sorts of, of gears and things like that. There's some debris left over from the stairs. Um, it could be dangerous, though, because you could get yourself, like, caught up in the windmill. What's your passive perception as well? Um, 14. Uh, you would also see that, like, some ways up, there's what looks like a large wasp's nest that has been built. Amid hmm. all of this stuff. Are they quiet, or is there active buzzing, or did, you know, is there, like, there are a couple buzzing? flying around, but nothing angry currently. Okay. Would you like to try and, and clamber up the windmill? Yes, I'd like to do so. All right. Um, and you're just going to try and clamber up right like it is and not not, not try and, like, jam it up or anything. You're just going to go right up. Yeah. All right. All right. Can you roll me an athletics or an acrobatics check? I think either is applicable as you can try and be Ooh. nimble or just strong. Oh, Zuzip, you leap up and yeah, begin to climb. Uh, you have no issue getting up past, like, the big amalgamation of um, twisting gears and things like that. However, now you're up on the main post, which is still spinning around, a little dizzying and disorienting. And up above you, you can see the uh, the wasp nest. 
Uh, right now, you're fine, though. Uh, would you like to use... So that was just your movement. Would you like to use your action to move again? Yes. All right. As you do so, you approach the wasp's nest. Is there anything you want to do in particular, or do you want to just try and get up without it bothering? Um, I For right now, I would like to... Um, I would like to avoid it, mm -hmm. but as I climb up, if I'm getting on this platform uh, or... Just conceptually, yeah. I want to I want to have it close by, uh, but uh, I, I would like to not disturb it in my climb. Okay, so basically, there's the large singular post that you're trying to climb up right now, and the wasp's net is built onto the side of it about halfway up, uh, or we're probably closer to three quarters of the way up. So, can you roll me an animal handling check as you climb this next thing, or this next part? This is just to avoid. Yeah, so you're climbing, and you think you've mostly avoided it. There's a little bit of angry buzzing, um, and you're up to the opening at the top that Jenny just climbed through. Um, and Jenny, did you yell anything out? No. Okay. Uh, triumphant, what would you like to do? You're still at the bottom. You just saw Zuzip do some flips and shit and make their way up uh, past all of the twisting gears that you think would suck to get caught in. Hey, little flower dude, where are you going? I mean, you hear the baby crying. Yeah. Oh, don't worry, baby bro. I'm coming. Okay. Watch what, out what, for the wasps. What, what are you... Oh, wasps. I should probably deal with those. Let me just, uh... If I back up out of the windmill, can I still see the wasps? Um, no. Because they're like three quarters up the post. Oh, well, then. That's not going to work. Well... You also know that Zuzip is maybe 10 feet up from the wasp, so pretty close. Oh, I probably shouldn't piss him off then. That's up to you. I guess I'll start climbing up the windmill. Okay. Um, so you're just going to try and avoid all the gears? I mean, yeah, I, do, I don't plan on, on jumping into them, if that's what you're asking. Well, okay, I was just wondering if you're using some other magic to get past them or trying to, like, jam them or whatever. Oh, um, no, I'm gonna climb up here. Can you give me an athletics or acrobatics check? You get caught in the gears, like, immediately. You just... Um, you try and climb up, and the thing... One of them moves under your feet. Uh, like, a, a part that you thought was solid it was actually just part of the debris. Falls that you fall down, and you get partially crushed between two of the gears. Can I, uh, like, pray to my textbook so that doesn't happen? Uh, maybe. What do your textbooks do, buddy? <laughs> Can I just pray a little bit and you're gonna, you're hope gonna... that Paler saves me? Yeah, you can do that after you take the crushing damage from the windmill. Oh, well, shit. You know what? I'll say, I'll say that you can take half damage from the crushing windmill. I'll be nice. All right. So it'd be 11 damage usually. I'll say it's five. Where are you teleporting to? Uh, well, the top where I was going. Okay, you cannot see solid space on the top because A, Jenny is up there, and B, Zuzip is up there. But you could teleport up and try and, like, grab onto the ledge. It'd be a pretty easy dexterity saving throw. Sure, let's do that. Okay. It's going to be DC. Or you could just freely teleport to the ground. But all right, DC 10. Zuzip, there's a... A quick snap, and you whoop, are hanging from. Uh, you see um, your your friend, triumphant, the black dragon worn, hanging Actually, from the ledge above you. About that. Oh no! Is it Bioshi now? I thought this guy's self was uh, an hour. There's no concentrate. It, it's it's not this guy's self. Uh, okay, so you see now Bioshi hanging from the roof above. Uh, <laughs> hey guys. I, I guess that didn't really work out for me. All right. Uh, can I, I going to go. can I use an action still? Oh sure. Can it be a spell? Um, your rules. No. Uh, nope. Okay. All right. Would you like to climb up the rest of the way? I mean, I I, I suppose so. Just to get behind Jenny. Okay. So you climb up behind Jenny. You see the baby. You see the little baby bird. Um, and the baby bird is going to turn toward you, Jenny, and go, and it's going to charge forward toward you, uh, and it's going to try to peck you twice. Jenny, it, oh, I'm sorry. 
then it attacks you. It gets a 24. Wow. And then Why, a 22. What does it have advantage? It shouldn't have an advantage. It's got a 22 and a 14. Wait, the, what? The 14? It's, it should not have advantage. So it'd be a 22 and a 14. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, the, 20, the, 22 so the 22 hits. Still gets you. Uh, yeah. And yeah, it pecks you. And, like, ah! and uh, uh, did I roll for my false life yet? No, but you can go ahead and do that now. We know that you have that. Uh, Penna, what would you like to do? You hear this awful like ah! cry up above of a baby bird. Oh uh, yeah. Uh, loud one. All right, well, more uh, more than likely, Penna is uh, ignoring the sound of the baby bird and and just inhaling the scent of dead meat up there. So yeah, she's attempting to climb up there as fast as she can. Okay. Yeah, you can smell the dead cow. Okay. Uh, so, so yeah, full movement action to just get up there as fast as possible. Can you only athletics or acrobatics check then, if, since you're just clambering over all the gears trying to get up? I mean, I already did Sorry, athletics. So. Oh, I didn't even see it. Yeah, no problem. Um, in that case, can you then you see that the wasp's nest is up ahead of you and Zuzip's there too? Do you want to just barrel roll past, or I'm sorry, barrel past them, or? Uh, or are you yeah. Gonna try and be careful. Uh, just barrel past them because uh, Pinna's instincts is to eat dead meat. You charge past the wasps and you hear the buzzing of the wasps. Uh, you've clearly upset them. Zuzip, uh, Pena, the other. Florin is now hanging from the big spinning pole right next to you. And we get to the top of the initiative. Jenny, it's your move. You hear something off in the distance, like a... But it seems quiet. Distant. All right, I'll run up to a uh, little line sign over there. All right, the baby bird rattle. will take an attack of opportunity against you then. Okay. It pecks you. It misses. Cool. I grab him and then okay. I fly. Uh, you said that the roof is open, correct? Yeah, it is. Open to the sun. Yeah, it's really I, shady right now, though. I fly out over the roof and down to the ground. Yeah. As you fly up, you see why it's so shady. There's a really large bird flying above you. Huh. Yeah, it's really, really big. Cast yeah, a big no, shadow. I, I fly down to the ground. You're on the ground. You have baby Einstein who looks to you and says, Oh, yeah, thanks for getting me. That was awful. You must be the heroes. That's all yeah, he says. Yeah, well, one second. Uh, I have to go back inside real quick while... Uh... Don't get me out of here. There's a real rock in there. Uh, yes, uh, I point up at the sky. Uh... After this, I, I quickly run inside. Uh, okay. So that do you put him on the ground or do you leave him? Soon. No, I, I'm holding him. Okay. I, I have him in my main hand. I have him equipped. Uh -huh. And my sure. shield in my off hand. Okay. Yeah, so uh, I, I'm inside uh, while right. the rock takes its... Yeah, zip, zip it's your... Oh, say it again. It sounded like it cut out. Zuzip, I'm sorry, it's your move. Uh, what would oh. you like to do? You see Jenny has the baby. But is running back in the windmill? Yep. And you hear just a loud ah! kind of echo from outside, a horrible bird's cry. Okay. Um, well, uh, I would like to uh, climb down because Jenny's on the ground floor, correct? Yes. All right, I'd like to to climb down. Uh, okay, you you can just jump down. You're fine. Okay, Jenny, we we have we have the baby. It's it's time. We we need to leave. Yep. Okay. Why are you running back in? I <laughs> point outside towards uh -huh. the giant bird. Yeah, I you can can't see it from out there. It's directly above the windmill current. There is a giant, giant rock out there. I'll provide a distraction then. 
Just pick a direction and run, and I'll give us a, a bank of fog to cover us. But we, we need to get out of here. All right, so are you casting a fog cloud, Zuzit, or are you waiting to cast a fog for Denny to run? Um, I, I guess I'll prepare an action as we coordinate this, you know, like kind of on, on three. Gotcha. I'll cast, I'll cast the fog cloud and Jenny just run in a direction. Okay. Probably toward the city makes the most sense. Um, mm -hmm. All right. Triumphant. I'm sorry, uh, Biyoshi. Oh, okay, you are I up guess on the so. top now with Jenny flew away and you're just up here with a giant baby bird that's looking at you hungrily. I guess I'm jumping down. Okay, the baby bird's going to make an attack of opportunity against I don't think it's next to me because Jenny uh, was 10 feet in front of me. Oh, yes, you're right. Sorry. Okay, so you're going to just jump down. From here, it's not an easy jump because you're all the way up. Um, Can I, like, jump down on the earlier rafter? Like, below the hive? The, yeah, I'm, below I'm, the I'm hive you're going to need to roll a check to climb down. Oh, sure. Uh, probably this one would be athletics or acrobat. Depends on if you want to be swinging around. or. Yeah, I'm just going to uh, fall. <laughs> yeah, you, you just fall down into the into the gears again. Oh, of course. Well, uh, question, wait, was it Penny like right there under the little open? Yes, Penny's right there. Would you like to try and catch Biyoshi? Uh, I can attempt, yeah. It's just, if you try and catch Biyoshi and you fail, you'll also fall into the gear. I mean, that's fine. Okay. Uh, so, we'll... Yes, Trank saving throw. You grab Biyoshi as they fall past you, and Biyoshi, you... You are held firm by pen. You do not <laughs> fall into the gears and take those damage. Thanks, you're a pretty rooted in there. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Is there anything else you'd like to do, Piyoshi? Well, well uh, they're talking about something big down there. I'm going to go ahead and uh, prepare myself. Okay. Uh, that's the faux turn. The baby rock is just up there. The giant diplumed rock is still way up in the sky. And the bees are pissed. A bunch of bees come crashing out of the uh, um, out of the hive. This time, uh, this is all at you. Um, God, my brain. I just can't think right now. Yoshi, since um, he's being dangled below. Uh, yeah. Sun I think three it should be. The way up. It's one of you two, Biyoshi and um, Pena. I thought I jumped down after I was caught. Oh, sure, sure. So Pena, they're coming at you. Uh, Pena, the bees all come crashing out, and to your horror, it is not wasps; it's bees. And the thing about bees are, bees just do damage. So Pena, you take seven points of piercing damage, and I need you to roll a constitution saving throw. Oh, that's actually oh. putting the damage down there. Whatever. Okay. Ignore the damage down at the bottom. Okay, well, you say constitution? Yes. Alright, so you ignore the poison damage. Oh, I'm sorry, you take half the poison damage. You take seven piercing and nine poison as the bees begin to sting you. And, uh, yeah, there's just a swarm of bees. All right, we move to the next in the initiative, which is you, Penna. What would you like to do? There are bees all around you. All right, I was going to say seven plus nine, right? Yep. Give me enough time to do the, like, the how much then, uh, like how much I have left of that. So I have okay. twenty. And you can see more bees pouring out. Okay, uh, Penna will just attempt to. Make the bees that are currently attacking her go to sleep using uh, her sleep spores. Okay. That is not enough. The bees do not go to sleep. Shit, yeah, but uh, I guess the, her next action is just to uh, drop down to the bottom. Okay. Um, yeah, I, you were where Zuzip was, so I think you're also fine. It was just the whole squeeze that Yoshi had to do that was a little tight. Uh, so you leap down to where Biyoshi and actually we're all down there. And yeah, you can see that Biyoshi is preparing defenses uh, while um, Zuzip and uh, Jenny are ready to, to run. All right. Uh, that was an action. I guess uh -huh. a bonus action. 
Let's see which was ahead. Yeah, bonus action. Uh, Penny will be pretty much getting ready for Zephyr. Okay, and what's the purpose of that? Are you ready? Are you like running or what's the deal? Uh, pretty much <clears throat> uh, ready for, for an attack. Uh, for the moment, is running or getting ready, or I should say getting ready to run since I kind of already use action. Alrighty. Uh, we move to the top. Jenny, what do you want to do? You want to run with the baby? So, Jenny is wearing her usual silver and gold armor with her mm -hmm. silver and gold shield. Yep. Um, but the fly spell gives her like these black wings and there's the shadow overhead. So you see Jenny leap out of the doorway and as like they pass mm. the threshold, there's an explosion of black and green and purple feathers. And the shadow makes the gold almost seem red and the silver of her armor seem almost pale or ghostly as the, this raven-like figure holding a baby, goes 120 feet towards the city. I think a lot of that is obscured by a fog cloud, it. too. Yeah, well, you see it for just a second before Zuzu's fog cloud embroils everything. Um, how? What's the dimension of the fog cloud? I cast it at level 3, so it's, oh, it's as big as I can make it. Okay, so it's a 60-foot radius. Um, Jenny, all that you see as you fly out, and I imagine you glance back right at the end of your, like, mad sprint as you're flying through the city, you see the large rock has descended down toward the, um, the windmill, and you think it might have seen you, but it's ignoring you um, currently, because you're flying away from the windmill. Uh, it's at the top of the windmill, and it is mostly covered in fog, how high it is. But you see its large wings kind of beating out, and you see it's mostly bare. There are only a handful of feathers left on this uh, this large creature. It's kind of like a giant chicken, naked chicken. Um, but yeah, nice. it seems to be ignoring you, uh, Jenny. It looks like it's checking on its baby, right? Uh, uh, Zuzip, it's your move. What would you like to do? Okay. Uh, so, as far as I know, anyway, baby is presumed to be safe, and you know, no, no yeah, cacaws, no Jenny blast out. Yep. Okay. No cacaws, no nothing. Oh, I'm sorry. You hear a horrible coming from like the roof above of you as the fog cloud. All right. I will constant. I'll maintain concentration on the fog mm -hmm. cloud, and uh, I would like to. Uh, well, wait, wait, Penny's on the ground floor now, Kurt. Yes. Or Penna. Yep. Penna's right with you. And Biyoshi? Biyoshi's also right with you. Oh. Uh, yeah, everyone's down with you. No. no one's up with the baby uh, bird. I mean, I'll, I'll look at both of them. We, we should run. We have the child. I mean, yeah, that's the plan. <laughs> All uh, right, then. All right, do the just run? Yeah. Do you want to try and run across the field following Jenny, or do you want to like duck into the riverbed and try and sneak away? There's a little bit of overhang and like rocks and things in the riverbed, so you could potentially hide. If that would provide cover, otherwise, if there's trees, I, I, you know, I, because I would want to run where there's cover. Yeah, I mean, there are a few scattered trees, but it's a mostly grass, grassy plain. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so you kind of sprill it off a little bit from Jenny, ducking down into the riverbed uh, and begin to make your way. Do you want to use an action to, like, hide at the end of that, or do you just want to sprint as far as you can? You'd be going um, half yeah, the speed I, if you were I, I, I would like to try and hide and, and see, you know, okay. uh, if we have gotten out, is everyone accounted for, and what's going on? Can you give me a stealth check? All right, you're ducking through. Uh and you're like hiding behind debris and stuff but you get to a stretch of riverbed where there's not a lot to hide and you just kind of duck down and hope that your plant-like form will blend in um Biyoshi? i mean there's 120 feet of fog in front of me so yeah you can't see shit. i'm gonna start running into it okay i'm gonna uh, uh, sure yeah you just you just run forward you start running across gonna... the grassy blades Turn around and uh, go ahead and do that to the to the roke. 
Rock. Uh, does it say a creature? You Giant. Can see? No, bird. it's a creature of your choice. Interesting. All right. Let's get the giant rock in there. Or the, the giant deplumed chicken. Again, you can see its wings. Just a No, you can't. You're totally blind right now. Also, I'm going to get the bees and the, the other rock just because I can. Okay. Okay. Yeah. You hear a little <laughs> screech and then a low, <laughs> loud screech, but it's slow. It seems to have had a good effect. And you're just running? I'm just running. I mean, I'm in fog. I'm pretty safe. Okay. Uh, the foe. Uh, Biyoshi, you hear a loud, like, crash behind you. It's not that far away from you. Something slams into the ground. Something massive. And you just hear a slow, loud <laughs> scream of the rock. Uh, and it... Let's see. It can't take reactions, right? Nope. It's load. Yeah, I think what this creature is doing, you see, like, you can't see this, actually. Penny, you see, like, a beak start to, like, poke around the door, um, and it's clearly trying to find whatever's in in there, which is you only at this point. Penny, what would you like to do? Run out the door, and considering I have Zephyr, Zephyr Strike up, no attacks of opportunity. It can't attack anyway. <laughs> yeah, it can't make an attack of opportunity. It can use a reaction. Uh, if it's right, can it use a reaction or can it not use reactions either? No, nope. can't use reactions. Slow is a like, real it was like bitch of a spell. Ready an attack to get you, but it doesn't. It tries to like peck it down at you, uh, uh, just blindly, but you just zoom right past it. Uh, you zoom past the ocean, the ocean, you feel something quick move past you, and for a second, you think it is a beak striking down, but it is not. Uh, and you guys yeah. see the crashing at on the uh, at the windmill. I'm gonna roll for the rock roll. Well, I was really done with my turn, though. That's fine. I'm just rolling for something. Go ahead. All right, so yeah, uh, uh, Pinna is uh, pretty much using her full action to just run 120. Just zoom, zoom. Okay, you, you catch up. You're underneath Jenny. And uh, yeah, do you guys just keep running for now? Yep. I'm going to just roll a quick uh, perception check for the rock. Uh, all right. It would be probably a disadvantage because of the fog. Ooh. So oh, wait, wait, wait. Uh, uh, this, there's a, uh, should, it should be with a, uh, attack, so... I'm guessing, like... You don't have to make the attack. You can just end the spell, it's fine. Uh, actually, no, I'm going to make an attack as I run by the beat. Sure. So give me a moment to find... Okay, here's... You, you miss. You can't see it very well because of all the fog, but you, you do not strike the creature. Your spear oh, is kind of fine. deflecting off its beak. Um, and yeah, I mean, if everyone's just running away, you get away at this point. The rock realizes you're gone, but is more concerned with its baby than with you all. So, do you just book? Yep. Yeah. Just book it. Okay. You run for a, a distance, and the fog cloud, I imagine, you eventually let disappear. It seems the rock is freaking out because of the fog cloud. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll maintain it for our cover. Water. And also, there's not a lot of water here, so I figure, I don't know, there's a nice yeah, cool bank of, of fog. And after some time, the, uh, the rock and the windmill are in the far distance, and you return to the city of Montauk where uh, the guards kind of, gr they greet you, of course. You are the heroes who brought back baby Maximilian McGillicuddy. Who, I punched uh, the three who thought I was an adventurer in the face. All right. Um, they arrest you. <laughs> yep. Triumphant returns! <laughs> and um, baby McGillicuddy says, Thanks for rescuing me. I appreciate it. I've been working real hard to get all the water devoted, but I guess I really pissed off that walk. Yes, oh. well, upsetting the flow of water can have an adverse effect on the wildlife. Yeah, I guess I'll have to just figure out how to make a portal of the elemental point of water instead. I'm sure that nothing bad will come from that. Thanks for rescuing me. Good luck in your endeavors. Yeah, oh, wait a minute. Here's your butt's eye on your box. Of and course, baby, my baby bro. 
reaches into his his tattered like lab coat and pulls out a wallet and f- fishes out some money. His hard times get tiny baby fingers. Can you guys help me with this real quick? Come on, you reach in and get the money for me. I can't reach it. At least it wasn't your diaper, but that's fine. Yes. Oh, actually, speaking of that, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I'm with that, go make a deal with Bucket for the 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 light. Uh, but with that, the adventure comes to an end. You each have earned your 200 Bartholomew bucks and one point of experience. Uh, congratulations, guys. Uh, you have rescued Maximilian McGillicuddy, baby genius. 